All right. Okay, so color. We have blue, yellow, and red. These are the primary hues, and these are the hues you will use to paint the color wheel. Um, let's talk a little bit more about some color. We'll talk, you know, more. I'll get into some more detail on uh, some color and color theory in on Thursday, but. The um, color we have this right in here primary, secondary, and tertiary. These are three ranks of hues, hue equals color identity. So hue, <clears throat> blue for example. So hue is often used interchangeably with the term color, but um, it's a little more specific. Um, you could ask which color is that. You could also ask which hue is that. And um, <clears throat> so you'll hear me use the term hue, and I'm referring to a color's identity when I use, when I use hue. Um, so color identity is hue. Um, primaries, red, yellow, blue. Do you know which are the secondary hues? Anyone? I think so. I think they're green, mm -hmm. yellow, and purple. Yellow's up here. Oops, I'm sorry. It's close. Green, orange, and purple. Thank you. In color theory, the term violet is used instead of purple. Okay. Um, and so I'll use violet. Functionally, everybody calls violet purple. Um, so you don't have to correct people. Um, but I'll, I will use violet. Purple is actually, um, you know, if you have a color wheel, here, let's just see this here. Color wheel. Yellow, violet, red, blue, orange, green, yellow, orange, red, orange, red, violet, blue, violet. blue, green, yellow, green. So the color wheel is, is a wheel, it's circular. <clears throat> purple is, according to what I have read about color theory, purple is about like right here, just a little bit on the red side of violet. You can, there's really functionally an unlimited number of color, color you know, variations of these hues in combinations. So we have, do this again, primary, red, yellow, blue, the order doesn't matter, they're all, you know, there's only three of them. <clears throat> With primary hues, you can't mix to create any of them. That's why they are primary. They occur in nature and you can't mix other colors to, to achieve them. Not in, not in paint uh, or like, you know, physical, like, um, like material, co like uh, colorants, like paint, like paint, dye, pigment, that kind of thing. Secondary, 
green, orange, and violet. GOV can help you. Tertiary. Uh, let's as an example, yellow, orange, red, violet. They are a mixture of an adjacent primary and secondary. So yellow and orange are mixed and create yellow, orange. Color theory doesn't use creative names to name colors because that can be uh, too subjective. Uh, if we have a like a red, violet color or maybe like something in here and we want to say it's called cranberry, that won't mean exactly the same thing to everybody. So uh, color theory avoids, avoids getting um, you know, creative in that manner. All right, so, so tertiary are a third rank of color or a third rank of hue that is mixed with a, an adjacent primary and secondary. And I, um, it's an important distinction to say that they are adjacent or next to each other on the color wheel. Because if you say that a tertiary is a mixture of a primary and a secondary, that could also be true of yellow and violet. But if you mix yellow and violet, you won't get yellow violet, you will get a neutral brown color. And that is a, a complementary mixture. When you mix two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, they will neutralize each other. And you know, if you take yellow and violet or blue and orange, red and green, if I mix blue and orange, if I take blue and I mix a little bit of orange into it, it's going to dull and darken the blue. It won't turn it into a, a, a third color. And if I mix, keep mixing orange into blue, across this, the blue will get darker and darker and you'll start to gradually lose the blue and in the middle it'll be kind of a brownish color and if you keep on going it'll slowly start to appear orange again. Usually if you make doing like, if there will be an assignment later where you're going to do a mixture of like a, you'll use a complementary pair and um, you'll have to make a scale. One of the scales you'll make for that will be to mix blue and orange or green and red, yellow and violet, and make a scale that shows transition orange, neutralized with blue, then getting into the middle where you can't see either of them, and then it'll gradually turn back to blue. The reason complementary pairs are called complementary is that they have all three primaries in them. Yellow and violet, violet's a mixture of blue and red. Um, green and red, green is a mixture of yellow and blue. Um, in our vision, the, um, um, we want, it is, it is harmonious to our eyes to see the primaries in some sort of balance in some way, or at least not to just have what, like, you know, like not to have just like, you know, like too limited a scope. Um, and so I'll, on, thur on Thursday, I'm going to do a uh, demonstration when all, when more people are here and you can see this, like if you stare at, and I've done this on a, like with looking at a computer screen and, and it does work. If you stare at something that is, red like really like you know nice and saturated red and you look at it look at it look at it and then you take the red away and you have a like a neutral like white field your eye will because you're looking at red and all you see is red your eye wants the rest of the colors somehow when you pull the red away and you left with that neutral background your eye creates an after image of the complement of that color, whichever one it is. And now that I'm telling you this, I have to show you. Give me just a second here. I'm going to uh, do this with the um,
I was trying this with a with a chair by uh, by Noel. Stop that. Okay. Let's do this again. Share. All right. All right, we are on the Null website. Come on. There we go. I want the lounge. Okay. So this chair yours for a low 5601 um, classic this is like a mid mid-century classic design so if we look at um, which one was the uh, I think it might have been the ultra suede yeah no I think it's the ultra suede I was looking at okay so here so you see this orange chair right Actually, to me, Duffy, to be honest with you, it looks gray. Are you talking about the one to the left? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Now it now it's orange. Okay, good. Okay. So what I want you to do is to stare at it. And what I'm gonna what I'm going to do, let me just have to move this. So what I'm going to do is like you're going to stare at this orange orange chair. Are you staring at it? Yes. Don't look away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to a neutral. And you'll see the effect of the like complement or what it really I think it's called simultaneous contrast. Um, so you're staring at the chair and ready. So when it switches to this neutral color, at first it looks kind of blue. Duffy, I'm sorry to say it's still orange on my screen. Ah, well, I guess it's... Uh... <laughs> it's white on mine, but I uh, maybe I'll have to see it on my computer. In oh, there we scale. go. It just changed on mine. It's white. Okay. All right. So then there's a, then there's a delay. Thank you, Sandy. Sandy saw the blue. So let's do this again. So it's orange. And just tell me when you see that it's orange. It's orange, yes. All right, so. Um, now mine is orange, it just switched. Okay. Good, so so from what I understand is that there's a delay for you, Marion. So uh, just keep looking at it. Okay. And so the way this works, you know, you can do this with any, you know, pair, you know, compliments. It helps if you have a more saturated, you know, color to look at to stimulate your eye. And then when we, when we switch it to neutral, your eye wants to create. So your eye sees orange, 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 orange. And when we switch it to the neutral, your eye will, the first thing that'll happen, it fa the blue fades, but your eye create, your eye is like, you know, sort of trying to find blue. Let's see if there's a more. That's a little more intense right there. One of these has like a really. Oh, mine just switched to. Okay. I can see the light blue. It looks sort of light blue. Yeah. That's so cool. Almost grayish light blue. Yeah. So this is a little, so I have this, this orange is, is a little more saturated. Um, so you won't see it like, um, you know, like, you know, like it's like, you know, the ocean or anything like that. But you see this sort of after image. And the way, the, so the, the point of that, you know, little like this demonstration is to show you that the, um, 
the harmony of a complementary pair is really part of it's really a part of how we like it's a part of human vision. And so you see a lot of the complementary pairs used a lot because you know just using those two hues you can create a um, a well balanced color scheme. So if like we have like this orange, this like this chair that's a little bit more orange. Some of these like the, the fabrics come in, you know, different. You know, some some of the fabrics come in more saturated versions of the color. So if you're staring at this orange, just stare it. You can even get kind of close and like don't look away. And immediately it's blue, and it takes a minute for your eyes to adjust and see it as this off white. So that's the demonstration I wanted to show you. Um, all right, so let's uh, stop the share of that. Come back to my camera. All right. All right, so here, yellow, yellow, orange, orange, red, orange, red, red, violet, violet, blue, violet, blue, blue, green, green, yellow, green. Those are the 12 hues that you'll create for your color wheel. Okay, now I mentioned this. Hue is the color identity. Value, we've seen this in black and white projects. Value is lightness and darkness. Um, all hues have a bait like we'll have like a like a sort of a place on the value scale if you take a if you took a a, a picture of a color wheel and converted it to black and white you would see that yellow is very light in terms of value violet is dark and it's you know it, they just start some of they start at different places on a value scale and that's very important with color because sometimes it's like it can be hard to see that colors don't have the same value or the, it's hard. It can be hard to see that like green and red are very similar in terms of value. But if you have a more saturated red, it can look like it's brighter. But, um, I remember this years ago, like, um, professional football, they used to do like this, like, you know, this, like, like a, uh, uniform kind of a gimmick where, on Thursday nights, every each of the two teams playing would have like a uniform that was all one color, all one of their team colors. So it might be like, you know, green and red or green and blue, like different teams. What they learned is that when they had one team in green, one team in blue, um, or it was one team in green, one team in red, that people who were colorblind watching couldn't tell the difference because they all looked kind of gray. And they're like, you have to have contrast. They, whoever designed this didn't think about the fact that they needed contrast. And that comes from value. Um, you can't have contrast from, from color. You can have like clearly like different, like, you know, I can see that it's red. This is red, that's blue. But contrast, value is very important for contrast. Saturation. Is the degree. To which. Hue or color. is present. Meaning, if I take red and I add white to it, I lower the saturation because then it's not just red, it's white and red. It's like a light, or as we uh, 
as we say in color theory, it's a tint of red. The same thing would happen if I add black to it and shade red. It's not just red, it's red with black. And so there's less, so as a mixture, there's, uh, there's something more than red in it and it cuts the saturation. So you see it less, you know, you see it with less strength. That's saturation. Hue, value, and saturation in any color that you look at, those are all present. And this is where there's a difference between the color more general. But each color has a hue. Um, each color has value. Each color has saturation to some, you know, all in some degree. Duffy. Yes. I'm having kind of a brain freeze. Um, figuring out the, like the, not really the difference between value and saturation, but I feel like I get lightness and darkness, yeah. but it almost seems a little like the same thing to me when I think of saturation, like, yeah. you, you know, fully saturated, I think of it like dark and strong of whatever hue that is. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. um, a yellow that looks like school bus orange yellow yeah. versus a yellow that looks like um, super light Easter egg, barely noticeable. Mm -hmm. Then those almost seem interchangeable to me to say, well, like the value in this yellow is really dark versus the value in the Easter egg pastel yellow is light yeah but you're saying you have to differentiate between the two you can't you, you just can't be that vague and interchangeable well you would in i think what you'll what will happen is that when you when you begin to apply color it'll help you to understand that difference okay thank you because you know i mean it's it's i think it would be misleading to say that the school bus yellow is dark because compared to other colors, it's not. But compared to the pastel yellow, it is, you know, relatively. Okay, so I'm hearing you say don't oversimplify because you, you don't uh, seem very sophisticated or educated about the color understanding. Yeah, I think that will I think that the, like when you, what the reason we're gonna do a series of painting projects is to help you understand those differences through through your own uh, work. Great. But is it, I mean, it's a good question because if it's it, if it doesn't make sense, I you know I, I always want to know if I say you know if we're talking about this and it doesn't make sense to you, then you need to tell me so I can make sure it's clear. Um, and yeah, because it's the thing is, is like I've, I've noticed this that. In color application, um, I've, if you don't know, if you don't think about, like, you know, like, especially like, you know, the con, but like the value and the saturation, you know, hue is pretty easy because you can say, well, I can see it's yellow. When you get into like, you know, darker, like if you can like take like a yellow orange and darken it and it kind of, you can get a little bit of like a mustardy yellow. Um, you know, that's where you can slowly get it into like, you know, like slowly start to turn a color into something more like brown. Then you're getting more vague about that. But, you know, there's a whole host of beautiful colors that are not really obvious, like, you know, full saturation color wheel colors. So, um, yeah. So in um, the... Um, Yeah, I think I might hang on with my demo, um, but I want to talk about. So so far, let me just ask: Does this make sense? What I'm doing, right, like what I'm talking about here? Yes. Good. Let's see. How about let's just look at.
Let's look at color wheels. Hmm. There are so many. Oh yeah, so um, yeah, so there. Are, when you get into color wheel or color wheels and color theory, you start to see that there are different, like you know, Windsor and Newton. They make paints for, like, they make oil paint and watercolor, and they make they make artist colors. And these numbers wouldn't necessarily con correspond with anything you would need. Um, but if you just have like. Um, Here, so I might my preference is to put all things hair. Well, that's very fascinating. I want to know all things hair. Um, I put yellow at the top, violet at the bottom, and red to the right. That's how I do it. You'll see, you'll see um, color, you'll see um, color wheels with blue to the right. As long as you got all the colors in the right order, it really doesn't matter. So, uh, so if we look at, you know, you can see like you can buy something like this. Uh, you can buy them at buy it at Blick. You can buy it at Michaels. You can these can be helpful. A pocket color wheel. This wheel, like this here, like. Um, that's the other side. So you kind of like turn this and it shows you the mixture. Like the white disc on the inside here. Oh, stop that. All right, that's, uh, we're not doing that. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Um, but so you can see, just I want like you see this, like there's like tons and tons and tons of color wheel diagrams. When you make, you're going to paint yours, and I'll, sh I'll demonstrate to you the painting on Thursday. Um, and then you're going to cut out creative color wheel ideas, something that might look a little bit more like. This one, look, middle, see, like this, you know, um, kids do these things. Um, I would suggest that you not get too super complicated in your shapes that you're cutting because you do need to be able to cut them out. Um, you know, this one, um, kind of interesting where they have the, uh, I'm not sure what the, I guess they, yeah, they make the opposite color on the end of the tail. Um, I like simpler, like this uh, simpler one right here. That's perfectly good. This like, you know, the, I'll ask for some like better, you know, better painted samples and I'll show you how to do that. But, you know, it's middle school, so we can give the, cut the kids some slack. Um, but you can see how like there's like with the, this yellow green here, or the yellow and the um, the yellow orange, where these are really solid, you see the color really well. Where you see it's kind of brushy, it's a little harder to see the hue really clearly because you get the color of like the you, know, you get the paper mixing in with it. So, um, you know, this kid did a really great job on most of it. Uh, I'll want you to make more like just make sure that they're all solid, and we'll talk about techniques for painting them so that you can see how that looks. Okay. Um, here. Well, you know, if you're going to get, you might want to get started. I'm going to do like a little, little like mini, mini painting demo. Since I have water. 
And I got mixing cups. And I got my brushes. And a towel. And a kitty cat. Or two. Astronaut. Right, I think it's time to put an American Eagle on my chest. Gotta do that one tonight. Good, uh, mute your microphones, please. Thank you. So my paint is uh, a little old, needs to be mixed up. Normally, like when you buy this chroma paint, it shouldn't have to get mixed like this. This is just like, I don't, you know, if I don't use this for a few months, then I've got to mix it back up. Um, Have some rags handy, old pieces of uh, t-shirt, good to have. With yellow, make sure you're putting it into a clean cup. Yellow is very sensitive to contamination from anything like residue of paint or dirt or anything like that. So the stuff kind of like, you can see it kind of flows a little bit, that's good. You don't have to add water to it uh, when it looks like that. If you do find like you buy a bottle and it's a little stiff, don't pour water into it. You can have water, if I wanted to add water to this, I would dip my brush in the here and like drip water in because it's really easy to put too much of it in there and then you're not going to get solid you know you're not going to get solid um, samples of color now when you're painting on this so this is like the media paper this is why you have the media paper don't do this on sketchbook paper do this on the media paper All right. there I suggest that you could think about ahead of time what your color wheel design is going to be. And you know, if you know that you'd need to, like you want them to be like, um, you know, you don't have to figure out all of this, but if you know you want something like triangular so that it'll, because it's gonna be, you know, if it's thinner in the center, it's a little easier to arrange it like a wheel. So you could start with something triangular. If you wanted to, you could just like cut it to have kind of like a hook thorn shape, which could be kind of cool. You could even like take that like that. But if I know I've got it like wider, like um, longer than it is wide, I want to paint a larger sample of color. So I've got room you know, when I cut it out, I don't have to, you know, have the edges perfect. If I decide, let's see, I'm going to make that, I could make that like one and a half by two and a half. Um, I'm going to leave a little extra on the outside. Quarter of an inch. I should also see two and a half by ten. Yeah, I could probably do that. So one and a half quarter inch. One and a half, and I can make marks all the way across there. Quarter of an inch, and then I want one and a half 
and a quarter of an inch. I want to leave a little space so I don't, you know, so I can overpaint and not crowd them. Light marks don't don't make really dark, heavy paint you know, pencil lines here. You just need them light so you can see. That. So one thing I would do is like think ahead and you know, try to think. Think about if I want this to be like one and a half by two and a half. Think about the dimensions of the piece of paper and you know try to work out like what's the most efficient. Should it be like should they be vertical like this or would it be better to do it so they're horizontal? And I'm thinking I'm thinking of this as up. There. So one, two and a half, and a quarter of an inch. Two and a half, quarter of an inch, and then ah, so close. I think I can't leave well. I'll, uh, I'm just going to leave that one, two and a half, a quarter of an inch, yeah, a quarter of an inch. Yeah, I almost make it. So let me just, uh, Finish drawing that out, and then I can think about it. So if I know I'm doing the whole sheet, then I'll grid this whole thing with this rectangular grid. I don't feel like I don't want to do the, the entire thing live. I come up a little short. Oh, so close. So I could probably just like make this a little smaller. I could use an eighth of an inch in between here, and then I could get one, two, three, four, and I can make this much more efficient in how I use this piece of paper. If you just grab a piece of paper and start you know, painting samples out, it's really hard to be efficient in how you're using it and then you're going to use up all your paper and you're going to need to go buy, you know, you're going to need to order another pad. So try to be, be efficient if you can. Think about it. So before I start painting, I will sometimes just like, you know, get the brush wet. You know, I also need to get my, one of my other colors ready so I can show you the mixture. Yeah, these guys have been uh, sitting. So the medium and the color have separated a little bit. So I want to make sure if I don't mix this, then I can just like get like the heavier stuff is at the bottom, the thinner, thinner at the top, and I can get really weak red because I'm just not getting as much color out of it. And it's all in there, I just have to mix it up. Okay. Be careful with the paint that you don't drip it all over the place. Have some rags ready. Old shirts are really great. I use them as much as I can just because I've got them and 
you take the time to cut up some rags, then you're not using disposable paper towels. Okay. Put a little bit of red into this cup. Not too much. So, because the yellow and the red are, you know, the, the, the red is darker. Here's a, so here's something with like Marion, that red, if you need less red to change yellow, like a little bit of red will change yellow a lot. A little bit of yellow won't change red much. So we're going to mix the darker color into the lighter color. But first, I want to paint out a sample of yellow. I hope my brush is clean. If I've got residue. So the brush, this, these bristles are stained from years of use. Um, if you clean them, clean them with soap. When you clean your brushes, clean them with soap and water. If there's if there's like blue paint still on the brush, it'll mix with that and turn this yellow green. It's not doing it, so I must have cleaned it off decently. So you can see the paint looks pretty thick there. I want to start with it thick and spread it. You can also see that you can where it's you can see where you can kind of see the pencil line through. Yellow's tough because yellow is just a light color. And um, there, 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 there. So when I'm painting this. That's done. And if I want to practice a little bit more with the yellow, I can, so I can get yellow on the brush, mix it, just make sure it's nice and consistent. Scrape get paint off of one half, one side. So it's gone there, on here. And then I will Get the paint off the brush, so I'm pressing a little, you know, not super hard, but a little harder to get the paint off the brush. And then lighter strokes across all the way. Don't stop in the middle and pull it out. Go all the way end to end, otherwise you'll get like a little divot in your sample. There, and that's done. It's got a little, you can see with the, like the light, there's a little bit of texture. That's going to flatten out as it dries. When I add red to this much yellow, that much red. It's a tiny amount of red, but look what happens. That little bit of red does change the yellow. So you can mix this, you know, like I prefer to mix these in separate cups. Um, you know, once I paint the yellow samples, I don't need the yellow by itself anymore. So I'll just mix it into the cup of yellow very gradually. Until it's thoroughly mixed. Okay. The red's going to be, oh, I got a little bit of green in there. I can see a little bit coming off of the, it's like the, some of the color, like old color will get up into the collar of the brush. But it doesn't look like it's really affecting my color too badly. Um, there. Very light strokes at the end, just lightly brush it over the surface. And then done. Don't mess around with it too much. Then, oh, don't take too much. So as I mix this, whoa, as I mix this, more red. Doesn't take a lot of red, but it, you know, you don't want it, you want to have enough red that it changes it, but not so much red that it very abruptly shifts the color. You can see I do, I am getting a little bit of, there's a little bit of green still up in the collar of the brush. I needed to do a better job. 
getting all of that off of there. There, good. So this is how you're gonna paint the color wheels. You're just gonna gradually go around. Start with yellow, mix red into it, and then get your range between yellow and red. You'll have to paint a separate sample of, of just red. Since like, this has got yellow in it, you're not gonna get back to red. Not really. Um, the darker the, the darker this gets, the more orange, the more opaque this paint is going to look. Because the red is just a, you know, the red makes it darker. Yeah, I think I might just override my measurements a little bit. There. And I was made my two and a half was long. Across here. So I've got a little room to, to work with. Good. The, the darker this gets, the more red I can add. I gradually need to add, like just increase the red a small, small amount. Um, and then I'll paint all the way from like add yellow, add red, get my range of orange from yellow, orange to orange to red, orange. Make sure you get it, you know, try to get it close to red so that you don't come up short and find that you don't really have red orange. Then you clean this up, clean the brush well, put some more yellow out, and then you add blue. Adding the blue gives you the range of green. Paint all those like this. Clean that up. Uh, get out red and blue and then mix red and blue to, with each other and get the range of violet. So, um, and so the first thing is just painting colors, just trying to make clean samples of the colors of like, you know, each of this, like this variation from, it goes from yellow into the oranges, into the red oranges, and then So that when you'll paint, you'll paint a lot more than you need. So that when they're all the painting is done, you'll cut all of these out and lay them out on a table and start looking for like, you'll know which is your yellow. You can even, you know, mark it and just like, that's yellow, that's yellow. And then here you're getting yellow orange. Um, with a, it's it's um, it's usually pretty easy to tell which is which is your primary, because you've got you also can just check it against what's in the bottle. Um, okay, we're gonna I'm gonna go back over this on Thursday and do some more demo. But I thought since I was talking about it so much, I would just tell you. Here, mixing the brush. If I just rinse the brush out, I'm not going to get enough paint off of it. So this I would have to go and clean up with soap and water. And what I would do is I take some like liquid dish soap, put it in your palm, and then just like swish this around. You'll see that paint is going to sort of like come out. Just do it several times to make sure that your brush is thoroughly cleaned. Um, when you go from like the red by like painting the range of orange and then you start you want to paint the range of green and you find you still have a little bit of red in your brush or a little bit of orange in your brush uh, it's not going to mix well when you try to mix blue into yellow or when you like get your yellow out to paint it you're gonna be like oh no it's turning orange don't want that okay So that's enough for today, and um, we will um, pick it back up on uh, on Thursday.